Hello everybody, um, so this is my first YouTube video slash how-to tutorial and for those of you that don't know me my name is Olivia and I am the founder and director of Lotus Maternity which is a range of nursing tops, this is one of them here, this is the uh, Daisy and Burgundy which allow women to breastfeed in public with confidence and complete discretion in a nutshell anyway. Um, and my background is midwifery. I used to be a midwife before I went to work full time on Lotus Maternity in September. And I had my breastfeeding update a couple of months ago. And we went through all the breastfeeding friendly initiative and all sorts of stuff. So I thought that I would share some of that knowledge with you all. So I've got my little prop. Uh, this is actually one of our first assignments at university. We had to um, knit one of these. Of course, none of us knew how to knit, so luckily, and my friend Alice's grandma did them all for us. Um, tell a lie, actually, that wasn't our first assignment. Would you believe that actually our first assignment, <laughs> a very uh, odd one, was to go and find our cervixes? Because the tutor said that if we weren't able to find our own, how would we be expected to find other women's? Uh, so that was actually a, a rather interesting first assignment that we had at the university, but hey, hey, there you go. So yeah, I'm going to go through a bit of hand expression with you today. So for those of you that really don't know the benefits of hand expression, it's really good, particularly if you've got a reluctant feeder in the first couple of days. Um, firstly, so that you can syringe it off whatever you get and give it directly into the infant's mouth. Or if the baby's on the neonatal unit, um, it's really important that they are getting the colostrum because um, obviously it's got all the antibodies and it's really abundant in energy and fat so it's really really good if you've got a baby that might be a little bit poorly on the unit and also to stimulate milk production because obviously if you have got a reluctant feeder and he's not necessarily feeding at the breast it's important to keep that supply demand up which is why we would encourage women if the baby isn't feeding in the first couple of days or if the feeding is not regular is to be still stimulating the breasts it's also good as well for when the milk comes in and perhaps you might feel a little bit engorged just to have the skill if you want to just express a tiny bit off just to relieve the sort of heaviness and the fullness of the breasts um, but obviously we only say to express a tiny bit off because you don't want to express loads off because then you're just encouraging the breasts to produce more milk. Um, so yeah, that's some of the things as well that it's really good for particularly to manage your own breasts as well. So if you've got perhaps milk ducts or things that might feel blocked or lumps, you can obviously use hand expression to try and get those out, which can limit your risk of having mastitis and things like that. Um, so hopefully everything makes sense so far. Um, so yeah, we'll just basically go on to how to do it. So what we always recommend is that you start by massaging the breasts just to sort of warm up the tissue and get that oxytocin which is the hormone responsible for the letdown reflex going okay so we just yeah advocate massaging the breast getting nice and warm before you start and then what we're looking for you to do is to create a c shape with your thumb and your forefinger and you need to position this about two to three centimeters back from the base of the nipple okay so you're looking to be about there. We used to say to feel for the change in the breast tissue but actually not everybody can feel where that is so we, we just advocate from the base of the nipple two to three centimeters back in a C shape with that thumb and the forefinger and then all you're wanting to do is it's a firm compress and release so it's a squeeze and a release and squeeze for about two to three seconds and release and you want to sort of aim for your, your thumb and your finger to be sort of above and below one another yeah you don't want them sort of not at the same angle if you know what I mean so yeah it's a squeeze down and release and it's a firm compression I would always say compression because sometimes when I've been with women and they've been hand expressing they're doing more of a sort of stroke and I've said to the ladies oh could you mind if I just you know have a go and they were quite surprised at the sort of um, way I was compressing compared to what they were doing so you do have to you know it is a, a compression it is a sort of squeeze and you might find it takes a little bit of while just to get the um, the milk flowing before you start to see you know the colostrum on the end of the nipple that's normal it often it, it does take a few compressions to actually start to see the um, 
the colostrum at the end of the nipple because obviously you're working in those first few compressions just to get the lactone reflex going. Just as a baby would when they first go on and breastfeed, they do those really strong sucks to get that lactone reflex going. So then you keep doing that in the same spot. So again, it's a compression release. Try not to be tempted to move your fingers forward like that. That's not really the motion we want. It's just a compress and release. And if you're finding that you're still not really getting anything, maybe just adjust it ever so slightly. So try moving your thumb and your forefinger back a little bit or maybe just attach forward to make sure that you are stimulating those milk ducts, okay? So you keep doing that, as I say, squeeze and release until you start to see the flow reduce. Um, so when the flow reduces and you're not getting so much coming off the end of the nipple, you then rotate your finger and your thumb so it's almost like a clock face if you imagine a clock face because you've got ducts that go all the way around the breast so you keep then doing it in that position and then as I say as the milk flow starts to subside you then rotate and work those ducts there same again when the milk flow starts to subside you go there and you're basically going all the way around until you've actually stimulated all of the milk ducts around the whole circumference of the breast area. And then, as I say, when the milk slows down, you can then fold together and you've done all the ducts, you can then change on to the other breasts. There's no really set time limit, it's just until you sort of the milk flow subsides, then you change over and do the other breast. Um, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Obviously, um, it's helpful if you've got a partner there or a friend or somebody that can help you to syringe the colostrum off. So obviously you're not getting huge amounts, particularly if obviously we're talking in the newborn um, early stages, you know, the first couple of days, you aren't going to get volumes. That's why we teach you to handle express because if you did it with a breast pump, half of the colostrum is going to get lost in the wiring and the tubing and you're just not producing the volumes because the baby doesn't need large volumes you know its stomach is the size of a marble very very tiny um seven mils we say the max capacity is on a you know a day naught baby um so there's not going to be tons you know until your milk comes in there won't be so that's why it's good if you get a little syringe one mil syringe somebody can sit there i used to sit all the time with ladies and just be syringing it off as the colostrum's coming. If you've got great flow and lots of colostrum and you're producing, you know, a decent amount, get a little cup, sterile cup, you put it in there and then you can either cook feed it to the baby, you can store it in your fridge and, and use it at a later date. However, it obviously depends on what's happening with your breastfeeding and what sort of stage you're at. Um, in terms of the storage, the breast milk can stay out on the side for six hours because obviously it's living, you know, it's got, um, it's a living thing. It's not going to be likely to cause problems if it's out for that amount of time. But yeah, so six hours on the side um, and then in the fridge, it'll be five days at home if it's at home in your house and then six months in the freezer. So plenty of time to store it and back it up. But as I say, that is just a brief introduction to hand expression, and it's a really good skill to have. So I hope that helps anybody that might be interested. And if you've got any questions or queries on this video, you can always contact me via my website, which is lotusmaternity.co.uk, or you can email me at inquiries at lotusmaternity.co.uk. So hopefully I'll do a few more of these, um, maybe one on attachment and positioning, um, and whatever I can think of that I think might be useful to mothers. So all the best with your breastfeeding journeys and I hope that has been helpful. Okay, take care. Bye.